Hi, it's Elisa Dartley Owl. Today we are chatting with San Francisco based painter Heather Robinson. Heather, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I would love to kick off our conversation with hearing a little bit more about your background and how you arrived at a career in the arts. I was always interested in art and artistic pursuits, um, you know, like most artists, I think, as a small child. Um, I wanted to be um, an architect from about age 12, um, and I pursued that really hard. And then um, studied, I studied architectural design um, in college at Texas A&M. Um, I, I, actually, the course was called environmental design, but it was basically a pre-architecture degree. And then I, um, I went to grad school at MIT in architecture to pursue an M arch, a master's in architecture. Um, and uh, I loved architecture, but uh, the art grad school really made me realize it wasn't for me <laughs> to be an architect. I still love architecture and there's a lot of, I mean, the studies were wonderful, but uh, I just realized my heart wasn't in it. Um, and so I left grad school and became a web designer um, because at that time it was pretty early on in uh, the web, you know, web world. And um, I knew HTML and I, taught myself Photoshop and that was pretty much all you needed to do to be a web designer at that point. So, um, so I did that for a few years. Um, I did, you know, contract um, graphic and web design. And I also did, um, um, I worked for a few companies full time. Uh, and then in, I moved to San Francisco in 2000 and then in 2001 was kind of the first dot com crash. Um, and uh, so I got laid off from two jobs within a couple of months. And uh, I, was, I was like, oh, do I want to keep doing this? I don't know. Um, while I was kind of trying to figure out what to do with myself, I started going back into the artwork that I was doing in my undergrad, which was some photography um, and collage. Uh, I had a really influential um, art teacher in my undergrad. And I started going back to that. And um, then I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. So that's kind of when I started pivoting to art. Um, I took a little sideways jog into uh, pastry. <laughs> I, I went to school to study uh, to be a pastry chef. Although I enjoyed that as well, um, I realized at the time my son was um, a, an elementary school student. And I was like, I'm just never going to see him if I, if I ever study baking as a career, if I do baking as a career. So I mean, I, I never really stopped doing art, but um, I guess that was when I realized I could take my skills and kind of pivot them into something a little more, a little more formal. So then I started thinking about, you know, creating pieces and working Definitely. through there. So, so starting with collage, I know that your work has since transitioned. When did that occur moving from collage to more painting focus? Um, yeah, slowly over, um, several bodies of work. Um, I, I always incorporated some paint into my collages. I weren't, you know, pure pure collage because um, I, you know, I wanted to be able to to control my colors and and uh, focus on some elements rather than others. I guess I'm a self taught painter in that case. So I, I went from just putting little bits of paint in my collages to to using more and more paint and fewer and fewer collage elements. And so it was a kind of a gradual transition there and I still go back to it so <laughs> I'm still I still like the you know I still like the objects I still like having objects to place into a painting sometimes so that's you know it's always appealing I like dimensionality to paintings and I think kind of collage sort of lends itself to that as well but but I guess over time I've just transitioned into having it me create more of the elements myself rather than borrowing elements your work itself has a lot of dimensionality to it and a lot of visual texture, which we can maybe touch on later how you actually achieve the effects that your paintings have. I'm curious about, though, the inspiration behind the work. Actually, I really feel like my architectural studies have, have um, really influenced my work. Um, I feel like a lot of what I've been doing is at least in part a reaction to some of those, um, those things I studied in school. Um, when I was in architecture school, um, it was very, I think, I think it's, you know, the trends come and go. And I think that now it's a little less so, but it was very anti, anti ornament, anti decoration. Everything had to be very, um, functional and, um, and decoration was really looked down upon. And I, I really, I felt strongly like that was not what I wanted to be doing. Um, I like the surface decoration. I'm really interested in 
um, how people decorate the spaces around them um, and what you know patterns people have been using patterns since you know since people could draw um, or create in any way we've always been creating we've always been surrounding ourselves with patterns and so I think that's the the that kind of pattern the universality of pattern the the things that patterns and decoration evoke the um, the sentiments and the feelings that they evoke uh, are something that I try to work with. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> kind of a, um, that's my main, I think that's my main inspiration is, is just the, the pattern and the, the fact that people surround themselves with patterns and decorations and uh, working with those, those things. Mm -hmm. Are you ever inspired by other artists as well? Um, oh yeah, for sure. Artists I know, there's tons of artists I'm inspired by, um, just that are, are local, um, that I work with or I've met, I've met, um, since I work at, um, Secession Art Design, the gallery, um, I do get to see a lot of artists work there. And so that's always inspiring too. There was a movement in the late seventies, eighties, um, called the pattern and decoration movement. That is, um, that was actually really inspiring to me. And a lot of those um, people who worked on that, um, in that movement, touched on a lot of the same issues that I kind of want to touch on, just the domesticity and the femininity and um, ideas about home and what is, you know, women's work and what is not. And uh, so that's definitely stuff I touch on in my work too. And that, that's what's inspiring me. I know that you mentioned actually before we started recording this call that you have been away from your studio recently because of the health crisis. But before that happened, what type of work were you working on? What was your what's your current body of work focused on? Um, yeah, my my current body of work is dealing with a lot of um, of uh, those kind of ideas of home, um, sentimentality, um, domesticity. Uh, I, I'm incorporating um, a lot of vintage wallpaper designs into my pieces, um, kind of harkening back to, you know, nostalgia of a certain time and place. Um, but I'm also, um, I also incorporate just um, repeating geometric patterns uh, on top of that. So uh, before I stopped being able to work in my studio, um, I was actually working towards um, creating work for two different art fairs that I was going to be doing. Um, actually three, <laughs> that all of that got canceled, of course. Um, so I was working with several pieces ha uh, had um, vintage wallpaper designs. And I also was working with, um, I went to Japan last year and I um, bought a lot of fabric and um, I was working with some of the fabric designs that were uh, Japanese. That's actually a good segue to how you create work. Can you share more about your actual process? I have not seen anybody working in quite quite the way that I do. <laughs> um, I start, I always work on panel um, and I start with a piece of fabric um, and that piece of fabric is usually patterned. The pattern is sort of a jumping off point for what I want to do. I start by gluing the piece of fabric to the panel and then I build layers on top of that. And I almost always cover up that pattern completely, but it's sort of a, a, a focal point or a jumping off point for what I want to start doing. Um, I work in a lot of layers um and one of the things that i do um that i always incorporate in a painting are um repeating geometric patterns and i use stencils to achieve that i put a thick acrylic medium through the stencil uh, and then when i lift it off it's got a raised texture so i create this really um thick surface there's a lot of clear layers to add depth and then i use a lot of really thin paints um there's usually uh drips in my work what usually comes first? Is it the fabric selection or do you have an idea in mind already of what you would like to accomplish through the piece and then you pick the fabric accordingly? Usually it's I have an idea of what I want to do with the piece, but um, that of course ends up changing once you once you start. Um, I really work layer by layer. I'm always working on a bunch of pieces at once because there's a lot of drying time involved. So a lot of times I'll just be able to put one layer on a piece and then it has to sit for a day or even two days. Um, so that I, that stuff can fully dry before I work on top of it. So I'm always kind of thinking in on different pieces at you know at once. So I'm definitely working layer by layer. I I usually have an idea of what um, what colors I want to incorporate into a painting, um, which may or may not have to do with 
what the fabric looks like. But I usually have an idea of what colors and what, um, I guess, what geometric pattern I want to use on a piece. Um, and then it kind of works from there. Do you have a sense of where you would like to take your art practice, things that you want to explore in the future, maybe different mediums or different concepts? I love working with acrylic. I mean, I think that's, that's one of the things that made me, you know, want to be a painter is I just really love, I love how it works. Um, so I don't really have a desire to um, change mediums. I would, one of the limitations I have is my studio, even when I'm able to go there, is really pretty small. Um, and I can't work big. Um, 36 by 48 is about the biggest I can work in my studio. I think I'd like to be able to work bigger. I'd like to be able to kind of get my scale bigger. And um, I, I guess the thing I, I it's always a challenge for me is um, loosening up like that. I always feel like that's something I want to do a little more of. Like, I feel like my work is, is fairly tight and fairly composed. Um, and sometimes like that's, that's what before all this went down, that's what I was kind of trying to work towards was being a little looser, letting stuff go um, a little more. So that's, where I think my work is going to be heading when I'm painting again. <laughs> it's hard to tell right now. You have a somewhat non-traditional background. How have you found uh, the fine art world? I'm a person who does a lot of research. <laughs> I like to know things um, before I jump in and do things. So um, I guess when I started, when I started doing art, I did do a lot of research on how to market and how to sell. I'm not sure there's one fine art world. I feel like there's a lot of fine art worlds. Um, and I feel like there's different ways to navigate in, in each of them. I feel like over the years, I've definitely, the, the thing that's been helpful for me is just to get out and meet other artists. And that's been, you know, that's been great to, artists are the ones I know are really willing to help each other. So that's been a help in navigating the art world. <laughs> What advice would you give to uh, an artist who was interested in actually building a career in fine art? Well, I would say um, meet a lot of people and talk to everyone. Um, I, you know, I now know this is a problem for a lot of artists as well. I mean, I was fairly shy when I started out. It was really hard for me to talk about art and talk to people about my art. Um, and I think that just gets better with practice. And I think that's just one of the most important things. Like you can do the best art in the world. And you, if you don't get it out there and go, don't call, talk to people, it's not going to be, nobody's going to see it. And, you know, you want to be here so people will see your work. So um, get good pictures of your work. I feel like, especially now, um, uh, as things are going to be more online for the foreseeable future. You can have really good work and if the pictures aren't good, nobody can tell it's good. So <laughs> it really, a bad picture really demeans the artwork. Um, so yes, spend money to, to get good photos of your work. So I know that you haven't been able to be in studio lately uh, due to the health crisis. How has the crisis impacted your work? Have you been able to create art in any way from home? Uh, yeah. So when I got back um, from my vacation and the um, yeah everything was shut down, I realized I couldn't go back to my studio. Um, I definitely sort of fidgeted for a week or two. <laughs> I was like, I don't really know what to do. Um, but then I, I was actually looking through some of my, whenever I go on a, a trip, I always, bring back a lot of ephemera maps and papers and tickets and things like that. And so I was looking through kind of my collection and I came across a bunch of vintage postcards. Um, and it started me thinking about like these, these postcards are really funny because they're kind of the most inane little images. There's like one of a highway in Tennessee, you know, there's, you know, here's this building in the middle of New Hampshire. It's famous or not famous. And here's a postcard of it. Um, and so I started thinking, well, like before I had these, I was like, these are hilarious. And now I'm kind of like, wow, I wish I could go there <laughs> because I can't go anywhere. Um, and so I started creating these collages of um, using these vintage postcards. Um, and I call them elsewhere. Um, and they incorporate um, uh, these postcards and just different ephemera from trips and um, embroidery, uh, which is something that I had... I had incorporated in my work several years ago um, since I, I work on the fabric 
I was actually working embroidery before I would um, glue it to the fabric and then paint it. So it was kind of interesting to go back and revisit that technique. Um, I'm finding the, the embroidery really um, kind of engaging and relaxing to do. Um, incorporate, I've never done it on paper before, so that's kind of new. Um, and it feels like while it's, it looks totally different than my current work, um, my studio work, I feel like it really kind of relates because I'm still thinking about home. I'm still thinking about um, women's work and domesticity and these kind of traditional techniques. Um, so yeah, I feel like it still relates. Um, it's totally different. And I don't know what I'm gonna be doing with it once I'm able to go back in my studio. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's been kind of interesting to revisit some things that I hadn't visited in a long time. It'll be interesting to see if that ends up weaving its way through some of your work that's in the studio too, if you decide to actually pick up some embroidery again and bring that back into your pieces. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea how it's gonna go. We'll, we'll just see. <laughs> but, it's been, but it's been great to be able to do artwork. Um, I still feel like an artist, you know, <laughs> even though I can't be in my studio, I feel like I'm doing things that, are, that I'm proud of and that feel worthwhile to me. Have you felt still creatively inspired? It's been up and down. Um, like I said, when it took me a couple weeks to just feel like I could do anything, I was just like, ugh. Um, I've been I've been cooking and baking a lot too, which I think a lot of people are doing, um, and that's definitely a creative outlet. And definitely, it's definitely up and down. Sometimes I'm really excited to work on things, and sometimes I'm like, ooh, okay, well, I'm just gonna bake uh, some bread. It, it was hard because I felt like I went on this vacation at the beginning of March. Um, and I was like, I'm going to come back and jump into the studio. I was really excited to be just like, get in there and throw paint around. And because I had been feeling like I really needed a change. And then, so this has just been, um, you know, a hit just as far as that. So I, I, I'm, I'm happy with, with what I'm working on right now, but I am also excited to go back in studio whenever I can do that.